I'm the Executive Director of Cultural DC. I'd like to welcome you to Cultural DC's Get Out the Art Virtual Bash. At the core of Cultural DC is our dedication to artists and their work. This has led to exciting, new, edgy work that has reverberated across DC, the United States, and beyond. Now is the time to continue engaging with and supporting art, art that moves us, that makes us think, question, and act. That's why we're more committed than ever to creating and offering unconventional space for relevant and challenging work. Tonight, we'll hear from current and past cultural DC artists who have been working hard to get out the art. We'll also meet new collaborators and take a look at some of the groundbreaking work from the past few years. Tonight, we'll be announcing raffle winners for the custom Andy Yoder sneakers. We'll also have some exciting announcements about what's to come from cultural DC. Thank you, Christy. Cheers. It was a wonderful introduction to this evening. Um, I'm Olwen Pungres, Board President of Cultural DC. I sincerely thank all of you uh, for joining us this evening. Um, this pandemic is challenging for all arts organizations, large and small, and your choosing to support us and be with us tonight means a great deal. For the past three years, I've had the good fortune to have a front row seat to the work that Cultural DC does and to see a um, transformation and growth of this organization. It has truly been inspirational. I'm excited you're here tonight to celebrate the creativity, collaboration, and risk that makes Cultural DC so exciting. We're not gala people, and this is not a gala. So sit back, pour yourself a drink, and have some fun. Because tonight, we're getting the art out. Cheers. DC is proud to present DC theater actor, singer, rapper, Jade Jones, also known as Liddy Official. Stays in the coolest mood 
rest away She comes back to the cooler side of town Cultural DC was all set to open Andy Yoder's exhibition, Overboard, in the Mobile Art Gallery. We're looking forward to bringing Overboard to DC in the spring of 2021. Andy's shoes have already been a big hit with audiences across the country. We're going to take a few moments to learn more about Andy's exhibit and his creative process with the help of a very special guest. Well, this seems par for the course. Gosh, this really makes me wonder about how I fit into the world. Would someone please tell me who I am? You are a sneaker, but you're not really a sneaker. You're a copy of a sneaker. You're a sculpture that's inspired by a sneaker that was inspired by an accident that happened in the Pacific Ocean. 
An accident. Oh dear. You know what happened was there's shipping containers that come across the ocean on freighters. And there are 36 million of these things in the world right now. And every year about 1,500 of them fall off ocean freighters. And in 1990, five of them fell into the ocean. And 80,000 Nike sneakers went into the Pacific. And as luck would have it, they floated. And they started washing ashore. And people collected them, like people do, and resold them. And, uh, and I read about this and got very interested in it because my exhibit's going to happen in a shipping container that's been turned into an art gallery. Thanks to all of you who purchased raffle tickets tonight for your chance to win a custom Andy Yoder shoe sculpture. Tonight, we're going to do the first raffle pull, and this is your chance to win a single custom Andy Yoder shoe. What that means is you get to pick. Do you like donuts? You could have a donut shoe. Have you secretly been shopping during the pandemic and have a closet full of bags and boxes that you've been hiding from your spouse? Well, now's your chance to turn those boxes and bags into art. All right, here we go. Tonight's winner of the first single Andy Yoder sneaker is... Laura Roulet! Congratulations, Laura. I can't wait to see what your sneaker looks like. I'd like to take a moment to make a toast. A toast to our entire cultural DC family. Without you, we could not do what we do. I want to toast the artists that inspire us every day. I want to toast our board who gives their time, talent, and treasure to help cultural DC make an impact in this city. And especially, I'd like to toast our newest board members, our new class of five, who will bring a new set of experiences and perspectives to the organization. So cheers to all, and thank you so very, very much. A deep commitment to community is at the core of Cultural DC's work. That's why I'm happy to announce that this fall, Cultural DC's Source Theater will host the Reclamation Project. Here's a look at the Reclamation Project and its work. Hello, hello. My name is Christopher Michael Richardson, and I am one of the core artists of the Reclamation Project. If you haven't heard about us, the Reclamation Project aims to provide healing and space for healing to Black, Indigenous, people of color artists, LGBTQIA plus artists, and disabled artists in the Washington, D.C. community by providing five-day residencies with theaters throughout our area. Now, I'm so excited about our upcoming residency with Source from October 6th through the 10th that will be facilitated facilitated by the incredibly brilliant Dylan Arredondo. If you are interested in learning more about us, you can head to our website, reclamation-project.com. You can head to our Instagram, at reclamation.prj, to see some of the work that we've already done. And if you want to get involved or get to know us a little bit better one-on-one, -on -one, you can send us an email at thereclamationproject.info at gmail.com. Looking forward to hearing from you. In recent years, Cultural DC has presented some of the most innovative, groundbreaking programming in our history. Work that has impacted communities throughout DC and started conversations around the world. Here's a look at a few of those highlights. The clip is hot and I'm like, why? She cut my hair low, said you good to go. Now shaped up the sides with the cool whip bow. I got the bowl cut. I win the cash is low. And your pops ain't home. Got the bowl cut. I got the bowl cut. Collaboration with Cultural DC allowed me to collaborate directly with Black communities, specifically in DC, through an actual intimate connection with those communities. Um, Anacostia being somewhere I haven't been personally, but um, luckily the entire team at Cultural DC was, you know, familiar with DC and then really helped me integrate into those communities by introducing me to community leaders, um, other people who have a strong voice uh, in Anacostia in order to really actually get to know those people and, you know, their kind of needs and desires and understanding of art and some of the intersections at which I was interested in discussing within my own practice and um, you know with my own painting practice I really 
uh, think a lot about community and and black individuals and black leadership and 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 loving each other and care. And so it was really important for me to see that um, you know it wasn't just some organization just like forcing themselves into a community just for some art project. It was actually really thoughtful and um, and interactive and there was programming that allowed for a lot of people to come together and play and um, listen and learn from one another. Um, it was really great. How are these you know, individuals trained to endure violence? And that's what we were thinking about this performance. We were looking at the, the, the SNCC footage and the mm -hmm. SNCC photos. It's like, okay, we're going to go in this room. We're going to close the door and I'm going to beat you because you trust me. You know, we're right. friends. Right. And the first time you get hit shouldn't be by a redneck on a lunch counter. You should know what it feels like beforehand so that you don't freak out and want to hit him back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because this is going to hurt. So I, I'm, I was fascinated with, with this idea of training. So I started thinking, well, what if African Americans could train themselves for these situations of violence, these in situations of intensity? So I'm thinking, how do you break free from a hold? Mm -hmm. Can that, how, if someone's shooting at you, do you run in a straight line or do you, do you zigzag? And this is what I'm thinking about. It's, it's, it's all about like preparing for that situation where someone could have a weapon and you have to get away from them. How do you, how do, you do that? Before Ivanka ever went to the G20 summit, I was already thinking about what that kind of the the, the sort of like appliance, um, the appliance um, equivalent of that kind of woman, and it was a vacuum. And so then once the vacuum happened, then it was clear that the viewer was was going to participate in some way, and the question of what the viewer would. Um, would throw for her because it's important that the viewer is staked, right? You, all of you who threw crumbs, you are giving her this work. You're, if you notice, you know, in my brief to the model, there's no, um, she's under no obligation to vacuum your crumbs. So it's like you throw them and maybe she vacuums them, maybe she doesn't. There's actually, there's no real job here. There's nothing, there's, there's, there's nothing really that she's supposed to be doing. Her main job is to to be vacuuming and looking pretty. But you throwing crumbs is kind of like, you're giving her her purpose, you're participating in this completely inane thing that she's doing. And it makes you, it, it makes you complicit. You could say equally um, guilty. It also makes you equally innocent. You're all doing the same thing together. She's in one role, you're in another role. Um, and I didn't want to let anybody off the hook. My body is a part of the work because of size, right? So she's 60 inches tall, I'm 60 inches tall. That's really, it's important. She's my stand-in, she's my doppelganger. I always think that I want to make drawings of myself or paintings of myself, and I don't. But when I saw Sib, I didn't need to, but I needed to make duplicates of her, mm -hmm. which is also a stand-in for me. But I needed to make more of her in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about, when I talk about things like that, I'm really talking about a kind of visibility that, uh, that a lot of women like me, Black women, experience on a daily basis. And so how did I make Sib more visible? How did I make myself more visible? By making more versions of her. 
right? Invisibility and ways of representa representing representation are um, kind of core to a lot of the things that I do. Tonight is my last official duty as board president of Cultural DC, but I couldn't be happier because I know who's coming next. And that I want to raise my glass to the new board president, Jessica Nigro, who has been a vice chair for the past three years. And I know will be a fabulous board president for the next three. Here's to you, Jessica. Hi, I'm Jess Nigro, and I am the incoming president of the Cultural DC Board. Uh, this is an incredibly challenging time for our community and for our country, but I believe that great art is made in response to current events and social movements. So this is going to be an exciting time to be able to make space for art and to promote artists doing great things, to partner with organizations and people committed to our goals, and to bring cultural DC forward in our community. Finally, dry land. I've been floating for what feels like years. After all that time by myself, I have to wonder if I am all alone in the universe. Are there other sneakers like me? I would very much like a companion. The answer to that is definitely no. Um, for one thing, there's about 350 of you in my studio. And for another thing, every single human being that I've met owns at least three pairs of shoes. So I don't know how many people there are on the planet, but that's a lot of shoes. So um, you're about as unalone as it can possibly be. Let me show you some of your, some of your friends. Uh, this is a Spider-Man shoe superhero shoe so you go from a superhero to a superstar especially in the under 21 set harry styles here's a harry styles sneaker corn dogs all kinds of games beverages from corona beer on the beach to irish whiskey kimchi from korea and just to prove that you're not alone, that you're loved, look at all those hearts. Look at all that love. Now it's time for the drawing for the custom pair of Andy Yoder sneakers. Here we go. And the winner is Kate McGinnis Wyatt. Congratulations, Kate, on your custom pair of Andy Yoder sneakers. I want to thank you for supporting Cultural DC, our staff, our artists, and our partners. Your vote of confidence helps us weather this current storm and enables us to find, create, and expose Washington to the very best art. Thank you. Cultural DC has been an incredible collaborator in providing the space. They have provided marketing support, development support, strategic support, uh, which is an incredible asset for uh, independent artists working in DC to have organizations like them supporting us and allowing us to focus on the art making. And for me, that's, that's game changing.
During these times, we're committed to our values and our community more than ever. While we know things are constantly in flux and plans will likely change, these are some of the extraordinary artists that we are excited to work with this year. While we may not be able to gather together inside this hall, we're gonna turn the outside of Source Theater, our home on 14th Street, into a work of art. Cultural DC is excited to collaborate with Baltimore-based curator Terry Henderson of Be More Art for an engaging video exhibition on the front of the Source building. In 2021, we'll be collaborating once again with Sarah Ewing to stage a solo dance piece, which will be performed in the Mobile Art Gallery by simultaneously being projected larger than life on the side of a major DC arts institution. Cultural DC is excited to roll out two new residency programs designed to promote new work and highlight innovative artists. From the source, a new performing arts residency will create a space for early to mid-career DC-based theater makers to begin developing a new project. Unlike anything else in the region, From the Source will curate a space for exciting new theater artists to add to the landscape of work being developed in Washington, D.C. Cultural D.C.'s new Capital Artist Residency, an annual program dedicated to Black, Indigenous, artists of color whose visual or multidisciplinary work contributes to a regional and national artistic dialogue. The residency will sponsor, promote, and house one artist in Washington, D.C., offering a creative space tailored for the artists to develop and amplify their unique perspective on a national platform. This project builds on Cultural D.C.'s belief that art is better when you create sustained and lasting relationships with artists and communities. Stay tuned this fall as Cultural D.C. will be announcing the inaugural artist for the Capital Artist Residency. If you need a hint, Cultural DC is such an exciting organization that does so many different things. And in each area, it's really working at the state of the art. So as I look to the future, I'm excited to see how the art is going to develop, how the organization is going to develop, and how it's going to contribute more and more to Washington DC. Cultural DC has done amazing work in its 21 years of existence, and that's a long time to be around and operating in DC. But I am really thrilled that we were able to secure this grant from the DeVos Institute because uh, we're very proud of our fearless leader, Christy, who took over as executive director two years ago and brought with her not only a keen eye for amazing art and a passion for the organization, but a willingness to take risks and to provide Washington with the kind of art that our community is clearly thirsting for. So we've launched this comprehensive strategic planning initiative to help us hone in on what kind of work do we feel is most valuable and what Washington DC needs most right now. And also how we can best promote artists who are pushing boundaries and taking risks. So the plan is almost complete and we're motivated to start executing it late this fall. Do people, do people don't know that this is a surprise, that there's gonna be a surprise raffle? No. no, we haven't announced. So this is the, this now has become the announcement of the surprise raffle? Yeah. yeah. Thank you again for joining us tonight. We're so excited that you could be part of these raffles. We're so excited, in fact, that Andy has created one more shoe. He has built this cultural DC shoe made from season brochures. And we're gonna raffle it off tonight to one more lucky winner. Ooh. We've taken all the raffle tickets, except those who have already won, and we've entered them here. Here we go. And the winner of this awesome cultural DC sneaker Molly Riley! Congratulations, Molly! Oh, I'm so excited for you to have this Cultural DC Andy Yoder sneaker.
to tell you the history of the pod. Gastropod. 500 million years ago. Isopod. Ah, 300 million years ago. <laughs> Peapod! 11,000 years ago! Coffee pods! 34 years ago! iPod! 19 years ago! Coronavirus isolation pods. Five and a half months ago. But finally, <laughs> escape pods. Our future. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us for what I hope will be Cultural DC's last virtual bash. I'm so grateful to our family of supporters. Without you, the work that we do would not be possible. I hope that you'll all drive home safely. Thank you.